Today's lesson is going to be on vertex painting. Vertex painting is what makes trees animate, but you can animate many things with it. So what I have is a sign that I want to ruffle in the wind. And what I have to make is basically a plane, which is a flat surface. But you go into your add mesh plane and you'll get one. Now I'm going to rotate it so that it's uh, the facing the right way. And now I'm just going to raise it off the ground and kind of scale it so it kind of matches, matches the uh, texture. Now we'll add a texture. And I'm just going to name the texture Start. And look for it on the... Uh, it's going to be a... You go to your base color here and go to uh, Image Texture and locate that texture. I was going to make this video weeks ago and never got to it. Well, I did, but something was, something's changed in the new update. I figured it out. So here we got our beautiful sign. Now we have to subdivide it because a box cannot bend. And if you look at the wireframes of this, it's just a box. It, it isn't even triangulated, just a quad. So we go to edit mode. We go to ver or subdivide. And here I'm going to go down to this little tab. And if you accidentally click off of it, it's okay. You can click on subdivide again. Uh, I'm just going to give it about 20 subdivisions. That should give it a little fluidity. A little more flexibility, I mean. And now I'm going to say triangulate faces. That will help it a little more, I believe. But I'm not sure. But I think it will. Now we go back to object mode, and now we have to change our shader. If you have changed your viewport shading to see your texture, that's fine. Which normally Blender starts in this mode, and you can pick that when you assign textures. But for Vertex Painter, we have to be in this mode. All right, now we go to Vertex Painter. And here I have on the desktop a document, not that document, that tells you uh, the colors and they basically affect how the wind affects these objects but I'll uh, I will put this in the description instead of trying to read it to you now but I can kind of explain that white is full motion and black does not move at all um, I'm gonna turn the specularity up down and down and the roughness up of this so maybe it'll help see it a little better uh, so what we'll do we'll have a radius of our brush here and strength at 100 and we'll paint the sides black because this of the sign is the part of the sign that doesn't move that's anchored or attached and yeah, that uh, you can see how the lighting hits this object. It makes it kind of, you wonder, is that really black or is it gray? And you just have to move it around. I thought changing this would help, but I, it doesn't. So I want this to be black, and then I kind of want it to fade into a red. Now I'll change this. You may have yours on HSV, but I like to use RGB so I can get pure reds or greens or blues. So I'll paint this part with a smaller brush you can hold F down to change the size of your brush I'll start painting this part red but I'm gonna leave this black in fact I'm probably gonna extend the black some more so this part will be red which moves less think of a trunk of a tree and it's red so now I'm gonna Change the strength a little so it's not full. So it's kind of like a gradient, is exactly what this is supposed to be. Now you can also blur to help it blur even better, blend even better, I mean. 
but make no mistake, this end here has got to be solid black, or it won't look right. Now, the next one is green. Uh, green is like a delayed movement. It won't move constantly. It'll kind of be a delay. So I'm going to kind of, this is kind of going to be the part of the sign that move some. Now I'm going to change it to blue and kind of paint in between that. This is similar how if I was going to shade this, like if I was going to draw on a, an actual sign. I'm going to use a little finger smudge and kind of, oops, that's too much. Kind of smudge these colors in. They kind of, you know, it's got this little pattern. Now I'm going to blur the whole thing. Like that. Maybe a little more green. so much of a blur it's a little less all right now there's another thing up here paint smooth vertex colors all right we're done with this thing now for things that animate with the wind they got to have a collision mesh so just like any other object we get back to object mode we can go back to our texture you can uh, just duplicate this object I don't think assigning collision mesh in the game as for just the object without a collision mesh in here, I, it'll work with the vertex shader. <laughs> it may, but uh, I'm just going to make it like this. You can test that theory, and this will be our sign. All right, I'll add our two empties. These are like the file directory hierarchy thingies that basically the game looks for. Interestingly, it doesn't look for these when you just have an animated object that's without collision. But I don't really quite understand that. All right. Hold, shift, left click, drag, and drop, start in the base. And then pick your two items here. Uh, and shift left click drag and drop them in the start so now we're finished now I just want to do one last thing I want to check to make sure the size of this is right for the game yeah that's about the right all right now I'm going to export this onto the desktop as a DAE <coughs> and I already made a folder on my desktop called arcade game which I've already did this video once already but I had to stop it this one would be better anyway I am curious which one of these turn out better start sign two. keep in mind your texture which you named your texture I'm gonna show y'all how to get around having to fool with the going into texture editor and dealing with red textures and stuff so it starts the name of our texture now i suggest you get something you can use one of my files that i've already shared but i would use one that's got an object that uh, let me see better i just grab it and explain it uh, something i made recently dirt Or uh, which one? Pothole. I think I'll use this one. So I'm going to grab the main materials file 
for my object I created here of this pothole. And now I'm going to go into this new folder I just created. And I cleaned this desktop and I still can't. My eyeball just doesn't go to these folders right. It's like they hide from me. So I'm going to paste it in here and all I'm going to do is edit it and change this information so uh, it's got the right stuff in it. So the first thing is you got a texture name and then another place for the name and then where it maps to and all these are the same. Well in this case all these are the same which is just start is what I named it. So save the time, copy this, paste, paste. And all we care about here is the color map, which in this case is just start.dds. Uh, I'm going to take out the normal map. Yours may not have that. And that's it. We don't need a second uh, texture, so I'm going to take the comma out of this and delete the second one. And so here we got our texture. So when the game loads, our object will have a texture and we won't have to fool with anything. But you may prefer to do it the other way, that's fine. I just, I like to have this taken care of and out of the way. Uh, save. Alright, now I'll put the folder in the game. In the uh, copy. Uh, in your Levels Art folder, it gets its own folder. It's like all these other little things I've made, they got their own folder. Simply because they got their own main materials. And you don't want them colliding with the one that's in. Now you can add all this stuff to the one in the main art folder. That's optional too. But this makes it easier if you just want to take this and move it from level to level. Just be sure if you move it from level to level that the proper directory is, is listed, which is no directory, <laughs> where the location of these are don't have, aren't supposed to have directories, but I know the game adds it after you do any changes in here. But if you ever hit the tilde key and look at the console commands, you'll see like these yellow lines that say texture, directory, change, 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 change. That's because uh, it's just the way the engine's working around the problem. But yeah, that's the proper way to do that here without a directory. Then you can move it from any location and it'll work in any level. So we'll load the game. And guess what? I made my first PBR terrain paint. Converted an old texture of gravel from another level. Took me a little while to figure it out, but I finally got the, got the idea how it works. Arrive at my new texture. There's a gravel from the other level. Which I'm not really crazy about the way the uh, base map does. And I don't know what that is. I got some crap going on. I messed with these particles trying to do something for somebody and look what I get. Yep, that's a particle I made. Damn beautiful, ain't it? And I, uh, I, I fixed this already, so I don't know why this is still doing this. I don't know. Maybe I got an emitter. Yeah. All right, that fixed the problem. Trying to make a lava splash. And that's what I get. Which I, I, I tell y'all a lot, but particles are terrible in this thing. They're terrible. So back to this. Uh, what we do now, we go to our forest tools. We make a new brush group, which I've already done this already, but I'll do it again. Start sign. Just hit enter. Hit enter to save it. If you don't, it ain't going to save it. Add a new element. 
you can call it whatever you want to call it. Well, let's call it start, hit enter, then add a mesh. You go to meshes and you say new, and this is where you got to find where you just exported or where you just copied that folder if you did the way I do it. But you can pick meshes you've already have in your game. You can go back and edit the vertex stuff and that'll work too. But I stuck this stuff in art levels. Uh, there it is. Start sign. Hit open. And over here on the right, you'll see this is the variables for the wind. Which I got a screenshot on my phone. I'm going to copy these off of my phone onto here. So I'm not pulling these numbers out of the air. They actually came from another, another one. Alright, so we got radius 0.25. How do you, I would I would say use these numbers here for your first thing and then experiment with them later on. Because at least you know these will work. That if you put something that doesn't work, then you won't know it's something you did wrong in making it that it was just these numbers. This is this can be frustrating. All right, save. There it is saved. So back to the brushes, we go to the start here. And we have to pick, this is the element. This is the brush, this is the element. You pick the element, and then you pick the forest item, which should be in here. Which I think this is the thing that I realized when I tried to make this first video, that it won't show up till you save the game and reload the game. No, there it is. I was wrong. <laughs> it's there. I'm not quite sure what the problem was. Either way, it seems to be working. But I didn't want that many signs. I just wanted one. I didn't even want two. I just wanted one. <laughs> Yeah. All right, now you're not going to see your wind work yet. And I didn't do the uh, transparency. I ain't worrying about that. I just want you all to see how the wind works. So what we need to do is, if there's not already one in your scene tree, you can type wind. And uh, there is a wind emitter. So I'm going to right click on it and say bring to selection the camera. And there's the emitter. You can see a little wind blowing, a little needle. If you need to create one, go to create object and go to other classes here and type wind. And you'll see forest wind emitter. And you just create. Looks like you just created another one, but I don't need another one. Anything in here, you can always go to move, more, move, selection the camera, and that'll bring it to you. You don't have to go hunting for it. So as you can see, our sign is uh, gently swaying in the wind. Well, it was. It needed that emitter. Even though one was in the scene, I still needed to create another one. I wonder if I delete the first one, if it'll still work. Yep, apparently. It just needed that first wind emitter. Now you can adjust the strength here. And you'll see it affecting uh, the sign over here more. Now it's not swaying a whole lot. But it is swaying. It is gently breezing. Let me fix this texture. Alright, so... I should be able to pick it with this there and go to advanced. This is transparency. It's just going to be an alpha clip. Just like that. Let's 
save my level. Now I'm going to go to my forest tool. When you pick your painter here, you can go back to the mesh and look for your... There it is. Go to the inspector and you get back to your wind properties. Mass, rigidity, and all this stuff. Uh, amplification, wind scale. Now I'm not sure which ones of these have are like immediate. I'm thinking if you screw with these after the fact, which I'm almost sure, hundred percent sure, screw them with these after the fact, crash the game. Uh, when you exit the game, it'll crash for some reason, or it did with me. Uh, but this is fine. I don't need it to blow a whole lot. If I want it to do more than that, all I got to do is go back into here and give it more paint. That'd be the easiest way to fix anything you don't like. Go back to Vertex Painter uh, and make it the more vibrant, meaning like the more green something is, or the more blue, like saying like brighter blue opposed to darker blue uh, is more intense. Like a dark red doesn't have as much effect as a brighter red. I'll re-blur this. All right, I'm going to re-export it, see what it does. It may not have an instant effect. It may be one of them things you have to restart the game to see. But uh, Yeah, you got to be careful. You get, forget you got to, when you do this, don't forget you got a collision mesh that you ain't painting on. So, Or you may be painting on the wrong one. Just reduplicate your object, rename it Collision Mesh. That way you got the, the, the Collision Mesh with the fresh coat of paint. <laughs> you know, you do all that work on one, but forget the other one, so you got to do them both. I'm assuming the Collision Mesh it takes into account its paint also, so since it's a duplicate of one, I don't know. I'm not sure on that. See, does our new sign move more? Like I said, this may be a thing where it may have to restart to really see that kind of change you just do. But one thing will make a difference is that amount of wind that's blowing. If you change the sign, uh, emitter. I got strength. If you ever turn the wind off, you see it kind of is a slight delay. So I know too, like when you do these little changes, um, some of them aren't immediate. Like I'm no weatherman, so all this stuff is like another language. Like I know what y'all y'all or y'all is from a from an airplane, but and I'm not sure if frequency the more the higher the number the less or the more. It's all this stuff y'all could tell me if I don't know. But I think that's I think this is uh this would be fine. You can sit here all day messing with these, not get anything done. So that's our little video on vertex paint.
Uh, you can do some little neat things with it. The only thing is drawback. At a certain distance, it does not do anything. So if you had the idea of making like this scene of these hurricane or tornado, it won't look right because stuff in the background won't be blowing in the wind like stuff in the foreground. So it's kind of fake. And no changes of any of the settings for radius or distance or any of that stuff seem to matter. Oh, there's another thing. You can limit the radius of this by enabling radial emitter. And that'll make a little globe that'll show you uh, how much that emitter will influence if you prefer to have several in your scenes with different emission strengths. But it won't make a difference if you turn it up and you're inside. Because basically if it's off, that's the same thing. But anyway, hope this got some of y'all interested in vertex painting. Maybe make something. Some cloth. Side of a tent flapping in the wind. I don't know.